Hello you guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I am doing my Q&A video which is long overdue. I think it's like a month almost overdue. Life has just been super hectic and super crazy and I have sat down three or four times to film this video and something happened each time. I asked on my update video for you guys to ask me any questions you had and that I would do another video answering them all. So that is what I'm going to do today. Hopefully I can get through this video without something happening because this video is like a jinx. I can film all kinds of videos and nothing ever happens and the Every time I try to sit down and film this video, something always happens. So let's cross our fingers that it goes smoothly today. All right, question number one is from Cheryl. She says, hi, I love your videos. My question is, how do you look and stay energized? I get slumps of not doing anything for days at a time and then have a bigger mess to clean up. All right, so hi, thank you for following me on my journey through motherhood. I am so appreciative of every single person who has subscribed to my channel. I know that I'm not like a doctor or a lawyer or a teacher. I am just a mom and I know that, but that is a job like in itself. It is multiple jobs in itself. And if I can inspire another mom or another wife or anybody, if I can inspire them to just like get dressed, clean their house, take care of their kids, that's awesome because it is hard. And like she said, you get into slumps of not wanting to do anything. So my tips for those days is to A, get up, make your bed, and get dressed. I like to put on a little bit of makeup. I don't always wear as much makeup, like clearly I, I don't wear as much makeup as I'm wearing today on an everyday basis. But just getting dressed and making the bed and like moving out of my room, like getting dressed, making the bed, closing the door and like not coming back in here, it helps me like have that energy to where I'm not just wanting to sit in bed all day. I'm a mom, I can't really sit in bed all day, but I can bring all my kids in here and not wanna do anything all day. And then the house becomes a mess and the dishes pile up and the laundry piles up and it's super hard once like it all piles up to get it all done because then you look and see that you have so much stuff to do and you get even more discouraged. So my tips for those days where you're just feeling in slumps or you're not feeling good or you want to stay in bed all day, my tips for that would be to get up, get out of your bedroom and go into the kitchen. Do one thing because when you start doing one thing like the dishes or mopping the floor or doing a load of laundry, when you do that one thing, it's like a chain reaction and you'll start wanting to do more and more things throughout the day. But the moment I make my bed like my whole day changes I don't know maybe I'm just a freak of nature maybe I'm the only one that is like that but that is what helps me the next question is from tubal reversal mom she says haha you made it girl congratulations you deserve it thank you she said my question is how many children do you want if more when do you plan on having another and then she says I have two questions but the second is a request can you do an eyebrow tutorial girl yours are always on point I will try to do an eyebrow tutorial but those are really hard to do because of my like setup and I don't know if it will be the best quality of video, but if you really wanna see that, I will definitely do it for you. So I have three kids, as most people know, I have three kids, they are five and a half and then my son is gonna be four in August. So five and a half, basically four, and then my daughter will turn one in August. And my husband wants another one. And it's kind of one of those things where normally it's the wife who's like, oh, I want more, I want more. But my husband, he really wants another one. And this is how I look at it as a mom and a wife. I would love another child. Um, actually, I could probably do like five or six kids if my life went that way. But because my husband is saying that he wants another one, it's kind of one of those things where I'm like, okay, well, we're gonna have another one. <laughs> Even if I was on the fence about it because he is so, um, wanting another one he wants one like so bad like I think he'd be super happy if I was like pregnant tomorrow um because he does want another one how can I look at him as a wife and as a mother and say no you know what I mean like I'm again this is another controversial subject that some people are not going to agree on because they're like you're the one who has to carry the child for nine months and you're the one that has to take care of them and I totally 100% agree with that statement yet at the same time, my husband is a the only person who works in our family, so because he is the only source of income and he completely 
financially supports us and he is like, yes, I do want another one and I want to take on that financial obligation because children, as much as you love them and, and everything like that, they are a financial obligation that you have to take care of. It's not like you could just pop out a baby and everything's going to come free to you. No, like it's expensive and seriously, the older they get, the more expensive they get. I have learned that the hard way. I thought babies were expensive, but the older my kids get, the more expensive their things get and the more opinions that your kids have. And yeah, they get more expensive as they grow, obviously. But because he is willing to take that on and wants another one, how can I say no? And as for when I want to have them, I believe that if God wants me to have a baby right now, I will have a baby right now. And if he does not want me to have a baby right now, then I'm not going to have a baby right now. I'm kind of hoping that it will be soon. I am not trying. So we're not not trying, but we're not trying, if that makes sense. And hopefully, you know, in the next year, we will be blessed with another little, little bundle of joy that will be running around soon. But I don't know. Four would be good. I would be good with four. But if I had more, I would also be really good with that too. And if I end up never being able to have another one and I just have the three that I have, I am so beyond blessed that I was able to have three healthy, beautiful kids that how could I complain? Valerie asked, I have a question about meal planning. I have a family of four and would love a grocery bill of $100 a week. Do you use the same meals each week or do you switch it up? Do you keep a list of favorite meals? It is super hard to have a meal plan of $100 a week. I mean, some weeks I can totally do it and some weeks I can't do it. Some weeks I get enough groceries to last $100 and I buy everything and it rolls into the next week so I don't have to spend as much the next week. It's kind of like one of those things that always balances out. Sometimes $100 I really have to stretch. For that week, the next week I may have excess and it rolls into the next week. It's kind of like a constant thing that you really have to keep up with because you don't want to go to the grocery store and buy a bunch of stuff that you already have. You know, you really have to pay attention to it. But as for the meals that I have, I have a rotation. Sometimes my husband gets like, not irritated, irritated isn't the right word, but like bored with what I have because it's like a constant rotation, but at the same time, he understands that I am a mom. And cooking is time consuming and hard, especially like new recipes. So I like to stick with what I have. Sometimes I will just change it up a little bit. Like when I make my, every week I always make my crock pot chicken, I always make barbecue chicken, and I always make chicken stir fry. And like an Asian kind of meal. Um, I'm trying to think what else I always make. Um, I always do like a one pan potatoes and chicken and I always change up what vegetables go with it. And then as for like my crock pot salsa chicken, I change up the salsa. Sometimes I'll use like a really sweet mango salsa. Sometimes I'll use like a green salsa. Sometimes I'll use just a normal red salsa. I like to like keep it the same but change it up a little bit so that it's not constantly always the same but I definitely have a list. If you guys would like a video completely on like my staple meals, I will do that. I might not show it, like how I cook them, but I will totally give you the recipes for it. A lot of the recipes I have just come up with myself through trial and error. Um, you know, as a mom, that's what you do. You just start throwing stuff together and one day it comes out really good and you enjoy it. And then you keep making it from then on out. Maria says, congratulations, thank you. Question, how did you and your husband meet? Were you high school sweethearts and where are you guys from? So we are both from California. I was born and raised here. My husband moved here when he was like three or four and has been here ever since. Um, we grew up in the towns next to each other, so they're about five minutes driving distance apart, but they're the towns that touch. They're both really small towns. I grew up in like a small little Swedish country-ish town. I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> and then he grew up in uh, the town next to me, and the town that he grew up in is like the raisin capital of the world. If you Google it, Salma will come up. That's what it's called. Um, but they're both very country farm towns. There's a lot of agriculture where we are from. We are basically right in the middle of California, like east and west we're in the middle and then north and south we're in the middle. If you drive two hours, you'll basically get to like the border of like, um, like Arizona and Nevada. And then if you go to um, 
two hours the other way, you will hit the coast. If you go two hours north, you'll hit San Francisco. And if you hit two, if you go two hours south, you'll hit LA. So we're basically right in the middle of California. I love where we live and I hate where we live, if that makes sense, because it is super, super expensive where we live, which you wouldn't think it would be because we're in such an agricultural environment, but it is all super expensive. But I love it because if we want to go somewhere, we are within a couple hours away from wherever we want to be. Me and my husband were not high school sweethearts. We both dated people during high school and then when we graduated high school, um, our paths our paths we cross paths I don't know how to say that we became friends five years ago because we had mutual friends one day my car was broken because I left like a light on or something and the battery died and he came and fixed it for me and he's like well do you want to hang out and I'm like I was so shy I was like okay like oh my gosh looking back at it I just have to laugh at myself because I was like such an idiot but we started hanging out about a week later and from then on out we did not talk to anybody else we did not date anybody else we just started our relationship and have not looked back since we didn't follow the normal path of getting married and having kids and buying a house our path has been a little bit different but i will have to say that throughout all of our our journey we have always stuck together and never like looked back does that make sense of course we argue and of course we disagree on things but we've never been in that situation where we're like nope we're done walking away like no so I am blessed with the husband that I have I am so happy that he is the father of my kids and like I said I'm just super happy that our paths ended up the way that they did marathon bride asks yay I was 999 ah so exciting okay love your channel my question is if you could travel anywhere in the world where would you go I have two different places where I would go and they are both from where my family is from so my father's side is all from Portugal his parents are from Portugal like all his family is from there and I still have family there that I have never met before so if I could go anywhere in this world I would probably choose Portugal because that's where a lot of my roots are and all of my history is and I'm super sad because I don't know as much Portuguese as I probably should my dad speaks fluent Portuguese and he taught us when we were little, like I used to know a lot more but I didn't speak it as an adult or even as a child um, so, and my, when my grandparents passed away, I wasn't around it at all anymore. So it's kind of a bummer and I wish I knew so I could teach my kids, but my husband is teaching them Spanish. So at least they will be somewhat bilingual. I wish they could add Portuguese to that, but maybe one day I'll be able to sit down and pick it up and teach my kids. And then the second place I would go or it's almost tied, but would be Ireland because my mom's side is from there and I have like roots there too. And my mom has been there, my grandparents have been there and hopefully one day I will get to go because it just looks so pretty. And one of my favorite movies, or one of my favorite movies, and one of my favorite shows is Game of Thrones and it, a lot of it is shot in Ireland and oh, I just want to go there so bad. Every time I watch it, I'm like, I just want to go. I just want to see it. I just want to like be there and see all the greenery and see the oceans and I don't know. I really want to see that place too. So hopefully one day maybe I will get to fly into Europe and just go visit everything that I want to see and experience it all. Other than getting married and having kids, I think that that would be a definite highlight of my life. Abnormal Housewife asks, congratulations on a thousand subscribers, thank you. She says, my question is, how do you keep your little one entertained enough to get anything done? My one year old whines like crazy if she's not the center of attention. My youngest, who is almost one, she is ten and a half months. So it's July right now, in the end of August she will be one. She is a little spitfire. <laughs> she loves to be the center of attention if she's not being held. She gets cranky. If she's not being nursed, she gets cranky. If you're not feeding her, she gets cranky. And it was hard at first having three kids because she was so, I don't want to use the word needy, but like she had colic and she just needed her mommy a lot of the time. Nobody else but her mommy. 
Um, now that she's crawling and she's standing on her own and she hasn't walked like on her own yet, but she walks if she's holding on to things, she's become a lot more independent, but it is, it is still hard to get things done. So like things like the laundry and cleaning, I do when she is in down for her nap. Things like dinner, I will bring her into the kitchen and I will either feed her, like put her in her high chair and give her things to eat, or I will put her on the floor and give her a pot and some pans and some spatulas and I will let her bang her little life away. I do have one little cabinet in my kitchen that she can open and like crawl into because there's not a lot down there. So I'll just put like her toys in, not her toys, but like kitchen things that she can play with. I'll just put it in there and let her kind of play with that and she'll crawl and then she'll come back and then she'll crawl away and then she'll come back. To be honest though, I don't know what I would do if I did not have my older children because they help me so much with her. They don't necessarily like do things for her, but they are always there to like keep her company. So like in the beginning, if I put her on the ground and walked away, she would scream her head off. This was before she could crawl or walk or anything like that. And then now that she is more independent and she can crawl around, as long as the older kids are like sitting on the floor with her or sitting on the couch or in the same room with her, when I walk away to like go to the bathroom or go check something in the kitchen or go change the laundry, as long as they are sitting with her, she won't cry. It's like she just doesn't want to be by herself. So I am so happy that for this baby, <laughs> like for, for her, that I have her older siblings. My other two kids were totally not like that. They could play by themselves because Obviously when I had my first daughter, she didn't have anybody else, so all she knew was how to occupy herself and then for me to occupy her, and she was the easiest baby. When my son came along, my daughter was only 18 months old when he was born, so by the time that he was at that age of wanting to play, she wanted to play with him, and they just kind of created this bond, and I could kind of just sit back on the sidelines and watch it. But as for the younger of my kids, I am so glad that I have the two older ones to like help me with her because if she would have been my first, I probably would have pulled out all of my hair and said that I never wanted to have another kid again. So I hope this kind of answers it. You just have to like find what helps your kids. For the first few, I would say six or seven months of her life, every time I cooked dinner, she would be in the backpack on me um, or in like a baby carrier or to put her down for a nap. In the beginning, the only thing I could do was put her in a swing, and then when she got a little bigger, I would take her for walks and like leave her in the stroller. <sighs> you know, you just have to try to figure out your kids, and every kid is different. So what works for me might not work for you, or what works for you might not work for me, but I would just say, to try to let your kids be where you are, but give them to, something to occupy themselves. Like when I'm making dinner, I give her things on the floor that are kind of dinner making things. And she's not old enough to know that yet, but at the same time, she feels like she's involved at, in what you're doing. And I don't know if everyone will agree with this, but I do have three kids, so I feel like I'm not an expert by any means, but I feel like I have some knowledge on this knowledge on the subject your kids just want to be with you whether they are six months old or six years old they just want to be where you are and they just want to watch you and and learn from you so as long as you are trying to involve them in what you're doing and not getting irritated like oh I have to cook dinner like just stop crying that just makes them cry even more whether they're six months or six years but if you're like here come help mommy and watch me do this or play with this while I do this. It's like a calming for them and they will kind of be more easy. Does that make sense? I hope I'm making sense. I, I don't know. It's really hard to like explain kids because they're not explainable. There are so many baby books and mommy books and how to do this and how to do that. And seriously, that might work for like the perfect child, but for us normal folk with normal kids, those things don't apply. And I have read so many baby books, like especially with my first kid, and they went in one ear. I held on to it until I actually had my kid and they all went out the window because you have to know your kids and learn about your kids and figure out who they are to like figure out how to deal with them. Does that make sense? 
I don't know, I am totally rambling and I hope I might cut this out, but here we go. The next question is from Haley. She said, congrats on a thousand subs, thank you. She said, my questions are, how old are you and how did you meet your husband? How long have you been together? So I already answered the husband part, but I don't think I've ever said how old I am in any of my videos. I am 25 years old. I will be 26 in November, so quickly approaching. I'm waiting to be able to call myself 26 because my husband turns 26 in a week from now. And I always like to be able to say that we're the same age because it irritates him so much. But yes, I am 25, almost 26. And yeah, I am super young, but I'm not as young as people think I am. Sometimes in my normal everyday life, especially when I'm out in public without makeup on and I have three kids, I've had people come up to me and be like, how old are you? Like they feel sorry for me in a way. And I'm like, oh, I'm 25. Or when I first had my daughter, I was 20 and I'm like, oh, I'm 20. And she's like, I had a random lady at a gas station ask me, she's like, oh, I was pregnant, that's what it was. I was pregnant and I was at a gas station and I was like 36 weeks pregnant. And I ended up having my daughter like three days later. And she's like, honey, how old are you? Like, it's so sad that you're pregnant. I'm like, oh, I'm 20. She's like, honey, you don't have to lie to me. If you're like 15 or 16, you could just say it. And I was like, what? Why would I lie about how old I am? Like, if I was 15 or 16 and I wanted to pretend like I was a different age, I'd probably say 18. I wouldn't say 20. Anyways, but yes, sometimes when I'm going out in public, people look at me like I'm a crazy person that's like 18 years old that has three kids, but no, I'm 25, almost 26, and like I have said, I have a five-year-old, a almost four-year-old, and an almost one-year-old, so I am young for the amount of children I have, yet I don't know. It's the way my life is, and I would not trade them for anything else in the world, so if I'm getting sidetracked, but that is because I'm really passionate about my age because sometimes people are so mean. I think I've talked about it in like some of my Target haul, in a Target haul, that like people, they just judge you, especially when like one of your kids is crying. And then the fact that I am young, they think I can't control my kids and that is a whole nother video in itself. But yes, I am 25, almost 26. And the last question that I'm going to do because this video is getting super long and I still have to throw something else in at the end, but it is from the Agape House. I think I'm saying that right. She says, congrats, girl. How long have you had your channel? I'm working my way to 100 subs. I'll get there. I'll get to 1K one day. Yes, you will. It might be a slow climb, but girl, you will definitely get there. So congratulations on that because 100 is awesome when you're starting out from zero. I have had my channel. I used to have like an old YouTube channel, like from when I was like 17 or 18, before YouTube was like a thing. And I used to do like hauls on there and like beauty videos and like hair tutorials and reviews and all that stuff before YouTube was like even big. So if I was like 16 at the time, I'm almost 26 now, so that was like 10 years ago. Um, and I used to film it on like a old camera recorder or like my old laptop. Yeah, like I disabled all those videos a long time ago before I deleted that channel. But then I made this channel in February. I really wanted to start back up with YouTube again because I feel like I just needed like a hobby, if that makes sense, like something to do to keep me sane. Because when you're a stay-at-home mom of three, there are days where you want to go crazy because you just want somebody to talk to or something to do. And it's held me accountable for a lot of things. So I went and I got a camera in February and a brand new laptop and I started vlogging just my kids and myself and then I'm like you know what I want to do something else so I started making like cleaning videos and all of the things that are now on my channel so I have only been doing it how many months is that I wouldn't even count February because I got it at the end of February so March April May June July I've been doing this for five months now crazy to think that it's been five months because it doesn't feel like it's been that long yet when I look back at those other videos I'm like man I was super awkward in some of those not that I'm not awkward now but like I was super shy now I'm learning to just go with the flow and just say what I have to say but back then like even though it was only five months ago I am like a totally different person on camera than I am now the person that I am on camera now is the person I am in real life like this is how I just am. I'm kind of bubbly and I like to talk a lot. My husband tells me I talk all the time, which clearly you could see that because I have been just rambling about everything in this video. But 
I was super awkward back then because like I didn't know what to say and I didn't know how to say it and I didn't know if someone was going to get mad at me or think I was crazy. But you know what? If you think I'm crazy, then you don't have to watch my videos. And if you love me, then you love me and you are subscribed, right? YouTube is a weird world and some people totally will love you and then some people will totally hate you for reasons that are out of your control. So... If you are at 100 subscribers, good job because that is an accomplishment in itself. And thank you for all of you who have subscribed to me and like my videos and follow me because that is an accomplishment for me because honestly, I didn't even think I would get to like 100. And now I'm at like almost 1300. So that is super awesome. And I am so blessed for every single one of you that likes my videos because I am clearly not getting paid and this is clearly just for fun and it's just cool to think that there are people that who can watch me and enjoy it or who get inspired or feel like they couldn't do something but now they can because they saw me doing it. You know, that's just what life is about and I feel like that's what YouTube was when it first started. It was about people just helping people whether it was showing you how to change a tire on your car or how to fix a broken iPhone screen or how to do a winged eyeliner. It used to be so much for fun just because you were passionate about something and you wanted to show everyone else what you were passionate about. Now I feel like there's so much competition about how many views you get and how many subscribers you have that it's kind of gotten lost along the way. So I just want to bring you guys authentic videos that just will help you, you know, just be what just get to like the roots of what YouTube used to be. Does that make sense? I hope I'm making sense. Because sometimes things make sense in my head and when I say them out loud and watch them back on video, they don't make sense. So hopefully this makes sense so I can keep it in here. Anyways, that concludes the Q&A part of this video. I am going to go grab a couple things and I will be right back to share with you the second half of this video. In the other video, I said that there was going to be a little surprise and I think two people on one of my Instagram posts asked if I was pregnant. And no, I'm not pregnant. I think I already answered that by my question about having other kids. So no, I am not pregnant. Um, but I wish I was. But I am going to be doing a giveaway. <laughs> um, this is a very small, small giveaway because I am only at 1,000 subscribers. So I didn't want to do it like too big because if I keep growing, then what am I going to do the next time around? You know what I mean? But my favorite number is three. My favorite number has always been three and I like gravitate towards anything three. So I thought I would be giving away three different things. So I will show you those right now. So the first two items are makeup products that I think anybody can use. The first one is one of my favorite drugstore mascaras and do not mind my dirty hands. I was doing somebody's hair last night and my gloves bled through so it's like I have color on my hands. It's not dirt or anything like that. <laughs> but the first one is one of my favorite drugstore mascaras. It is by Jordana, the Best Last Extreme. I use this by itself on my days where I'm not wearing a lot of makeup and I could just do one coat or I could use it like today. I just use this and I put like four coats on it and it like makes your lashes really, really nice and flirty and big. So I am going to be giving away this and along with that, I always get questions on my brows and one of the one of my favorite drugstore products I have the um, the gimme brow by benefit and I really really like that but I have found a relatively good dupe for that at the drugstore and it is this um, NYX tinted brow mascara and this is what it looks like and don't let the dark packaging fool you it's not as dark as it looks and I love using this on days when I'm, again, not wearing a lot of makeup and I can just kind of put it on really fast and good to go. Or on days like today, I use this in a combination with powder and I achieve this. So, you will be getting both of these makeup products because I think that this are, these are like any mom. With these two things, a little bit of, of concealer and maybe some blush and you are you could just walk out the door and be good to go. So these are what, like two of my top things that I cannot live without on a daily basis. So I thought I would throw these in on the giveaway. Third item is something that I made. So I am going to have to make a different one because this one is for me as like a demo, but I will have to know your size and one of your favorite colors. So this is what it looks like. It is a shirt and it says hashtag mom life in this super pretty metallic gold lettering because I kept myself saying mom life all the time because it's mom life 
Like, I think if you watch every single one of my videos, I think I say it in almost every single one. But I thought that that would make a really cute shirt. So I had this shirt made. My brother-in-law, he makes shirts and he let me be creative and make a bunch of shirts. And I thought that this one would be perfect for a giveaway. So this is what it looks like and I am super obsessed with like the shimmery letters. I wore it the other day and it was super duper cute and I got so many compliments on it. So one lucky subscriber will get all three of these goodies and I don't know. My favorite thing out of this giveaway is the shirt. I think it's because it's pink and gold and those are two of my favorite color combinations. That's what my wedding was and my baby shower and what my daughter's baptism was in was all pink and gold, so I'm a little bit obsessed with those two colors. So all the rules will be in the description box below. I am not even gonna talk about them at all in that video because A, I don't want this video to get taken down because I'm saying something wrong, and B, that will just make this video even longer than it already is. So make sure you guys give this video a big thumbs up if you like Q and A's and giveaways, and who doesn't love those two things together, right? Right, I will see y'all in my next video. Bye guys.